So Medi5752 is administered intravenously every three weeks, and there was a dose escalation portion followed by dose expansion cohorts. The data we presented was focused on the dose escalation and the 2,000 milligram dose expansion cohort. In total, there were 86 patients, including 61 from dose escalation, 25 from the dose expansion. The median age was 60. Most patients were male. The most common tumor types were kidney cancer and, and lung cancer. Um, Medi5752 was tolerated uh, reasonably well. About 38.4% of patients had grade three or four adverse, uh, adverse events related to Medi5752. And 31% of patients discontinued treatment due to treatment-related adverse events. However, there were only three DLTs or dose-limiting toxicities observed, and as such, a maximum tolerated dose was not reached. The most common side effects were rash, um, hepatic events, and hypothyroidism. And there was very low rates of colitis observed, which is very uh, unusual for drugs that target CTLA-4. Um, what we did notice, though, is that as we completed enrollment of the 2000 milligram dose expansion cohort, we noted that these adverse events that I've just described were much less common in doses that were lower than 1500 milligrams. And so we compared the safety between the two groups and demonstrated that actually patients received lower than 15 milligrams, you know, their rates of discontinuation were very low at 9% compared to the 47% in the higher dose group. And the grade three, four related adverse events were also much lower at 18% compared to 50% with the higher doses. And that was reflected across the hepatic events and the rash that I described earlier. What was really interesting though, was that although um, the, the lower doses were much better tolerated, the pharmacodynamic data that we, um, that we generated showed that actually, despite being the lower doses, um, it gave us confidence that we were still able to achieve high levels of anti-PD-1 and anti-CTLA-4 blockade at those lower doses. So what we showed was that at doses above 225 milligrams, Medi5752 resulted in sustained peripheral PD-1 receptor occupancy of greater than 90%. And when it comes to um, CTLA-4 effect in terms of T-cell proliferation, we showed that at doses as the lowest 500 milligrams, Medi5752 was able to achieve peripheral T-cell um, proliferation that approaches what is seen with drugs such as tremolimumab at 10 milligrams per kilo, which are not very tolerable dose doses at all. And we also saw a dose-dependent increase in expanded T-cell clones, which reached a plateau from 500 milligrams of Medi5752 onwards. So I, I guess essentially we showed that Medi5752 is much better tolerated at lower doses, but at those lower doses at around the 500 and the 750 milligram dose level, that the anti-tumor activity, uh, the expected anti-tumor activity through the pharmacodynamic studies uh, was much uh, greater than what is uh, expected with the co-administration of PD-1 and CTLA-4 inhibitors uh, as we know them currently. So what we believe is that we are able to achieve T-cell proliferation and clonal T-cell expansion that exceeds what is achievable with these standard doses.